So the other day at Envision, I came across a view within our AngularJS application that had a super simple slideshow where it was just a number of li list item elements and they were just scrolling from one to another and uh, I think actually in their version it would just stop on the last frame but in this one you can see it, it jumps back to slide one. And that was being powered by a thousand plus line jQuery plugin and it was the only thing in the application that was actually using that jQuery plugin so I stripped it out and just replaced it with a 10 line keyframe animation, a CSS keyframe animation. And it got me thinking about can I actually make this more dynamic? Can I have dynamic keyframes and animation? To be honest, I don't mess around with keyframes all that often. Um, it's a talent that uh, I have not really built a, uh, a mental model for. Uh, so this is me just trying to experiment with creating a dynamic keyframe animation in Angular 10 uh, and going to try to power this simple slideshow that you're seeing. Um, so let's just jump into the app code so we can see how it's being consumed. Right? So here are my list of slides and uh, here is my simple slider directive. And this directive takes a static object. It's static in this case. I'm trying to keep the demo very simple, which takes count, which is the number of slides pause, which is the duration that any individual slide will remain in view, so this is 2,000 milliseconds, and transition, which is the time that each slide will take to transition to the next slide, 450 milliseconds. So we can jump back here, we can see each slide is up for two seconds, and then transitioning for 400, 450. Now, uh, the simple slider takes care of the animation only. It doesn't take care of any of the layout stuff. So if we look at the app component less file, the less CSS, what we can see here is the slideshow takes care of the height and the width. And here's my UL and it's taking care of the display flex to get a horizontal, um, a horizontal layout as opposed to a list layout, right? And it's got a height and width of 100% of the, of the slideshow here and the LI, right? Everything from a layout standpoint is controlled by the app component. The only thing that the simple slider is doing is setting up a dynamic keyframe. Now let's look at how this is working in the HTML. So if we look at the elements, let's maybe move this over here. If we look at the elements, what we'll see is that in the head tag, there is a style tag that my directive has injected. And you can see here it's simple slider two keyframes. And what happens is it creates pairs of percentages within the keyframe. You can see here we have uh, zero, zero to 16%, 20 to 36%, 40 to 56%, 60 to 76%, 80 to 96, and then 96 back to zero. So this each one of these pairs is about 16% apart, and each sets of pairs are about 4% apart, right? Zero to 16 versus 16 to 20. Each one of these pairs determines how long a slide is in view, and then the difference between the pairs, the 4%, determines what percentage of the overall animation time is dedicated to a transition. And you can see that each one of these keyframes simply translates the UL, the unordered list, over by some multiple of the viewport that uh, the slideshow is contained within. And um, super uh, simple slider two keyframes. If we jump down here, you can see simple slider two, uh, and it's using simple slider two keyframes. So this animation duration, ugh, Chrome, this animation duration of 12.25 seconds is how these percentages map to overall user experience, right? So when this goes from zero to 16%, that's 16% of 12.25 seconds. Now, if we jump back over here into the into the HTML, you can see that I'm not providing percentages. I'm providing uh, human-friendly millisecond-based percentages, uh, millisecond-based times. It's up to the super uh, the simple slider directive to calculate the overall timing and then dole out percentages based on the fractional parts. So. With all that said, let's take a look at the simple slider directive and see how it generates this style tag with these percentages. All right, so again, it's going to take this simple slider, which I'm translating as the config object locally. Um, it's going to keep track of a style element 
internally. That's the style element that gets injected here. And ultimately what we do is build up a string and then set the text content of this style tag to that string. So we have to wait until our inputs are bound. And in this case, I'm only looking at the ng on init. I'm not caring about ng on change because I'm, again, trying to keep everything super simple. Um, we take the count, that's the number of slides, the pause, that's how long each slide is in view, the transition, that's how long the slide uh, transitions from one slide to another. And it, we take that all together, the count of the pause and the count of the transitions, and that gives us our total. Then from the total time, right, which is 12.25 seconds, we can say, well, what percentage of the total is the pause, the in view time, and what percentage of the total is the transition? And once I have the percentage pause and the percentage transition, it just becomes a for loop looping over the number of screens, figuring out what the from and the to percentages are, right? That's this 0, 16, 20, 36, 40, 56, so on and so forth. Building up this stack of keyframes, right? From, to, and then each frame is essentially a multiple of a 100% translate X. And then ultimately, I create my style element, set the text content, and you can see I'm taking those keyframes and I'm just collapsing them down into a single string. And that's where we get this. So anyway, um, there are many other much more official ways to do animations in Angular, uh, but I don't use keyframes very often, so I thought this would just be a fun exploration of keyframe-based animations, trying to see how I can make them dynamic in Angular. Obviously, we have no control here, right? I can't say like ease in and ease out of a particular slide. I can only set um, a timing function for the entire animation, not for a particular set of keyframes. At least I'm almost certain that that's true. Uh, so you do give up a tremendous amount of control trying to do something, I don't, I, I'm hesitant to call it clever, but let's say uh, uh, non-common, uncommon. <laughs> Um, you do give up a bunch of stuff. So I, I would take this as an experiment more than anything else. And um, yeah, just a fun learning experiment, me trying to build a better bent model for keyframe-based CSS animations, uh, trying to see how I can make these dynamic. So anyway, it also gave me an excuse to upgrade my, uh, my, my Git repository from Angular 9 to Angular 10. Woo -woo, that's awesome.